Tonight, I want to introduce something. I'm, I'm not, I don't think I'll finish it. So we'll continue hopefully next, next week. It's a very important topic that I believe that it needs to be dealt with. I'm talking about the battle that began from your womb. No, let me, let me correct. The battle that began from the womb. It's not your womb. The womb. Somebody said the womb. Say the battle that began from the womb. Most of us are sitting here and there are things that we are experiencing in our lives that after many years of trying to change it, it has not been changed. And it's a result of a battle that began from your foundation. Amen. There are situations that you, you don't know how it came to you. You were born into it. And tonight God said, I want you to go back into the womb and correct some things that went wrong in Jesus' name. So when you jump to Genesis chapter 25, verse 22, let's look, read Genesis 25, 22. Put it on the screen for me. He said, and the children struggled together with her. And she said, if it be so, why I... Why I am, what am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. So this is a woman that was pregnant. And she began to feel some struggling going on between her, in, in, in the home. And so the Bible said that she began to question herself that what is going on? And so the Bible said that she went and inquired of the Lord. And what did the Lord say in verse 23? And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. The two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. And the elder shall serve, serve the younger. Hmm. Dula Labasat. <laughs> a woman going through struggle within herself. She's pregnant. As well, but she didn't even know that she was pregnant with twins. Because that technology to see how many children you are carrying was not invented yet. So she went before the Lord and asked the Lord, God, what is happening here? And the Lord said, two nations are in your womb. Now, whether male or female, the Lord can care less. Which stands to reason that when you inquire of the Lord what you are having, most of the time, God will care less about the sex. The doctors are the ones responsible to show, the, show you the sex. But it would take the prophetic to know what kind of person you are giving birth to. You would think that God would have told him, her, my daughter, it's because you have twins. One is a boy and one is a girl, or they are both boys. God did not say anything like that. He said, two nations are in your womb. That means that the kind of people that you are bringing forth are nations. They carry nations. You understand? He said one will be stronger than the other. And the, the elder will serve the, young, the, the younger one. Now what's happening here? I thought the younger one should be serving the elders. But in this way, God is telling us about the children before they were born. Which means that when you are, in, when you are pregnant, you should know the kind of person you are giving birth to. As a as matter of fact, you should know the name of your child before you give birth to the child. And if you name your child after birth, the child is already delayed in destiny. Because any time God visited, when God visited Sarah, he said that you shall give birth to a child. His name shall be called Isaac. 
Isaac's name was given before he was born. Jesus Christ's name was given before he was born. John the Baptist's name was given before he was born. That means that as a mother, you should inquire of the Lord, what is the name of my child? There are many times, I, 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 I'm, I'm experiencing My wife has told me every name of the child that we've had. And so every name they carry was already spoken of before. As more about my last born, she came with a name. She showed up in a vision to her that her name was Kimberly. And it was so. So that means that these children carry their name before they come. The problem is that when we don't know the name of our child or our children, we don't know how to bless them and how to raise them. Do you remember, was it Samson, that when the angel of the Lord visited his mother, <laughs> told her about everything that they should do to him, that he was a Nazarite. Now, if you don't know that you are giving birth to a Nazarite, can you raise them as a Nazarite? And the problem is that we are giving birth to Nazarites, but we don't know how to raise them. And so we are imposing curses on our children we are, the names that we are even placing on these children are, are, are cursing them. Jabez. Why? Because when I was giving birth, I was in pain. But the Bible said the man was honorable. He was a great man. If the mother knew who the child was, he would have, she would have never named him Jabez. Did your mother knew who you were before she named you? Did your father knew who you were before he named you? Jacob. Jacob. Hmm. A supplanter. A thief. The one that steals his brother's blessing. But when he met the angel of the Lord, he said, what is your name? He said, my name is Jacob. The angel, no, no, no. Heaven don't call you Jacob. Heaven will call you Israel. For you are a prince. And so if the mother knew that that child was a prince, he would have never struggled the way he struggled. Even after he took the blessing, the man still went through struggle. Jacob struggled. I mean, how, many, how can you work 14 years to get one wife? His uncle changed his wages 10 times. Tonight, may we go back into the womb and correct things that have been done wrong. Now, you have to understand that the greatest error a Christian can make on earth is to neglect the operation of Satan and wickedness. Most churches and some churches will never mention about how the enemy is working. And Satan loves it that way. The more ignorant you are, you, you, you are about him, the more he's able to work in your life. For Paul said, that for we are not ignorant of his what? Devices. Lest he gain advantage. That means that the less you know, the less you know about Satan, the more advantage he has over your destiny. So we are not here just to preach you preach Christ to you, but also show you how the enemy works, so that when it's happening, you'll know that, mm, this is from the devil. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. If you lack knowledge about how the enemy is operating, you will perish. Negligence and ignorance is what gives Satan an advantage to afflict us and to oppress us. Many of you have had some dreams and you did, not, you did not know what to do with the dream. You thought it was a normal dream because you were ignorant about what the enemy was doing in your life. May the Lord open our eyes that we will not be ignorant of the devices and the oppression of the enemy in the name of Jesus. 
Acts chapter 3, verse 2. Acts 3, 2. Acts 3, 2. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb hmm, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Stay here. A certain man, a certain man, lame from where? His mother's womb. In other words, a certain man was crippled. The word lame, you may not understand. The man was crippled, and the crippling was not because an accident happened when he went to play basketball or when he was driving. The crippling happened from his mother's womb. Hey! The womb of the mother. That by, the, by the time the mother gave birth to him, the day he, he was already crippled. Lame. Lame. Today, anyone under the sound of my voice who was attacked in the womb of their mother today by the finger of God May you be delivered. May whatever they did to you, may it be overturned. In the name of Jesus, we sent we sent the angel of the Lord back into the womb to correct the things that the enemy has done in Jesus' mighty name. Lay from his mother's womb. There are people that say that they were born homosexuals from their mother's womb. Have you heard that one before? They say we were born with it. And it's true, they were born with it. So then we must go back to the womb. It is where most of the issues are coming from. The battle that began from the womb. Some battles were never coincident. It started all the way from the womb. You were born with it. Now, we live in a world where a doctor can tell you the kind of sex you are having. Only they know how to know it, but they do it. And there are many people that reject the baby before the baby is born. Hmm. And because of rejection, many people have come on the wrong way. And I'll teach you why it happens that way. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Now, as a child of God, you must be conscious that the earth that we live on right now is full of battles. Somebody say full of battles. It is a field of battles. When you are born on this earth ready to fight, that is why the moment, that is why the moment a child is born, they begin to cry. They've entered the battlefield. This earth is a battlefield. And I always say that life will not give you what you deserve, but what you fight for. You must be willing to fight in order for you to survive on this earth. And those that are not willing to fight are the ones that killed themselves before time. They give up. They say, why live? Let me just cut my head off. Let me just hang myself. Let me drink this poison and die. Life is full of battles. And as long as you are willing to fight, victory is yours. I say victory is yours in the name of Jesus. For the Bible said that for we are more than conquerors. You will conquer. At the end, you will conquer. At the end, you will conquer. Ultimately, you will conquer. You will win the battle. You will win the war in the name of Jesus. You will conquer this. Keep fighting. Because this earth is full of battles. Now, to have access to what is ordained for you by God, you must fight. Hmm. Christians, I'm talking to you. To have access to what is ordained for you. You, 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 you. There are so much blessings that are ordained for you. But in order for you to have access to it, you must war. Somebody say, I must war. Say, I must fight. So becoming a Christian doesn't mean that the day you accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, everything go gravy. 
You think the job will just happen. You think the marriage will go smooth. <laughs> you think your children will turn out well. No, you must be willing to fight. It's a principle. And I'm not, I'm not going to teach, you know, soft Christianity. No, no. This is the reality. We did not get here on a softness. We fought to even get to this level. And to go to the another level, we must fight. Somebody say, fight! The Bible says you are a soldier of Christ. A soldier. What do soldiers do? They fight. It's a battlefield we've entered. And we must be willing to fight in order for us to access and, or possess our possession in the name of Jesus. There is no way you can possess your possession in Christ without contending with the power of wickedness. There is no way you can possess your possession in Christ Jesus without contending with the powers of, of Satan. The wicked powers that control this earth, you must contend with them for you to receive what God has ordained for you. Now, is it scriptural? Hmm, let's see. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verse 24. Deuteronomy 2, 24. He said, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given into thine hand, Sinhon the Amorite, king of Hezbon and his land, begin to possess it, and contend with him in battle. I have given you. I have given you the king. I have given you his land. I thought the Lord gave me so I should be happy. I should call for a party. I should celebrate. But he said, hey, in order for you to possess it, you must contend in battle. Somebody say contending in battle. You must be willing to contend. You must be willing to fight. You must engage the powers of wickedness in order for you to take what belongs to you. I have given you the marriage, but you are still single. I have given you the child. As a matter of fact, the prophetess saw it. She told me. The apostle saw it. He told me. The sister in the church saw it. They told me. I even had a dream. I saw myself even standing in front of the church testifying of how the Lord has blessed me with a child. But I wake up and after a month of that dream, I am still not pregnant. I'm still not pregnant. I saw my husband. Oh my goodness. I saw my wife. But I'm still single. My DMs are dry. Nobody wants to even talk to me. What is happening? I have given you the marriage. I have given it to you. But you must contend. Hey! Somebody say hey! Say hey! Say hey! hey, hey. I have given you the job. But no interviews are coming. I have given you the child, but I'm still barren. Giving you the husband. Now, as for the one that I was hoping that he would even ask me, just got married. I have given you business. As much as I got prophetic word concerning my business, my, the name of the business, the prophet saw it, he said it. But I don't even know where to begin. I have given you the land. I have given it to you. I have given the rain to you, KFT. You must begin to contend. Contend! You must fight the powers of wickedness in order for you to possess. 
Say we must possess. Say we will possess. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. He said, how can one enter into the house of a strong man and take his spoil or his goods unless he first bind the strong man? Jesus has also spoken about this. That in order for you to possess your possession, you must contend against the strong man. I have given this to you. But you must fight. Today receive the power. Receive the anointing. Receive the mantle to fight for what belongs to you. To contend for what belongs to you. In the name of Jesus. He said upon Mount Zion there shall be holiness and there shall be deliverance. And the children of God, the, the, the men and the women in KFT, they shall possess their possession. Tonight receive the power to possess your possession. Those that are looking for marriage, receive the power to possess your marriage. Possess your finances. Possess your children. Possess your health. Possess what God has already given to you. I have given to you. You want peace. He said, I have given to you. But he must fight for the peace. Fight for the peace. When something is coming that will mess up your peace, fight it. You, you, you think that, you know, Christianity, you, you, see, you see, you think that everything will happen. Oh, of course I know Jesus. Jesus is my brother. So everything must happen. No. You must fight to possess what belongs to you. You want a good marriage? Fight for good marriage. You want a peaceful home? Fight for a peaceful home. There are certain things that is, is ordained for you to do in order for you to keep the peace. It's a battle. Somebody say it is a battle. Yeah. Tonight we are possessing our possession in the name of Jesus. Anyone that is sick, receive the power to possess your healing. In the name of Jesus, receive the power to possess your business, possess your health, possess your ministry. In the name of Jesus, receive that power right now. Right? Receive it, receive it, receive it, receive it to possess what belongs to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. It is impossible to possess your possession without engaging and contending against the forces of evil on this earth. You can try to say no way, but go and check. In order for you to possess anything here, there's forces here already that will contend against you. And you must, you must, you must, you must fight them in order for you to be free. Because whatever you receive without fighting, Satan actually came from Satan. If he the one that gave you the marriage, he will not fight it. <clears throat> because it's already in his purpose. It is to kill you. That marriage will end up, you will end up in your grave at the end of the day. So he said, why fight them? I want them to stay together. Let, <laughs> let the marriage kill them. You, you, you get it? So anything Satan gave you, he will not fight you. But if it's the Lord that gave you, Satan will fight you. Amen? I pray that we, our eyes will open. So from today, know that whatever God, is the, God gave you, anything God is the one that ordained and gave it, it's subject for what? Battle. It is subject for you to fight. And I pray that you will be a warrior Amen. who will never give up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So the reality is that, is that the, on this earth, when you enter here, you have entered a place of what? Battle. 
And the greatest mistake that we can make is to neglect the ministry of Satan and his operation on this earth. If we do that, we will never possess our possession and he will always be in an advantage. And so when Jesus came and he was teaching us how to pray, he said, deliver us from the evil one. Oh Lord, deliver them. Our father who art in heaven. He said, deliver us from what? From evil. We need deliverance from evil. Why? Because if you are not delivered, the evil will have advantage. Because the word Satan means an opposer. So Satan will always oppose. So that word, his name is just oppose. Oppose everything that has to do with God. He's an opposition. That is why you don't have to pray against him for him to come after you. You don't have to curse him for him to come after you. As long as you don't have to even mention, you, you see, you, he already opposes you. He sees you and you are his enemy. Whether you pray or you don't pray, you are still his enemy. So if I were you, I would do more prayer. And not be afraid. Bible said that he has given us the power to tread upon serpents and upon scorpions and upon all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Say nothing will hurt me as I take control and charge over powers of darkness in Jesus name. Amen. So he opposes everything, which means that his res first responsibility is to resist the fulfillment of the purposes of God on this earth. So everything that God wants to do, Satan's assignment is to what? To oppose it. To resist it. He's a resistor. Opposer. An enemy of God. The enemy of God's purposes. So if you, if you are of the Lord, that means Satan is your enemy. And he will make sure that everything that the Lord wants to do in your life, he opposes it. That is why you must fight in order for you to have it. When Daniel prayed, immediately that the Lord heard the prayers of Daniel the first day, the Lord responded to prayer. But as the prayer, as the response entered into the, the second heavens, and about to enter into this earth realm, something happened. The opposer stood up there and said, I will not allow this response to enter the earth. And he resisted the angel that was bringing the response for 21 days. And Daniel kept praying. Daniel kept fighting. You see, that was when Daniel was fighting to make sure that God's purposes are done. Because Daniel understood that in order for me to get response, I cannot just give up. I must fight to the end. From today, receive the power to fight to the end. There are certain prayers that you have prayed, but the response are not coming. I want you to continue to pray. Some of you say, but pastor, I've been praying, I've been fasting. I'm here to advise you, pray one more time. Pray once again. Fight again. Fast again. Pray. At the midnight, stand up and pray again. Keep praying until that day because I see that on the, the, the persistent prayer will break every resistance in the name of Jesus. Say, I will pray again. Say, I will pray again. When Satan comes around, his first assignment is to make sure that what God said concerning you will never come to pass. So Satan loves information. That is why when prophecy comes, <laughs> it's like Satan says, yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. Because there are certain things about your life that are concealed. And as I'm dealing with womb, you know what? God concealed those things in your womb, in the womb of your mother, that even your mother don't know. 
There are certain things that if you, I, I don't care how prophetic you are, you can see about your children, but there are certain ones that you will not see until the due time when God sent a prophet to them. So there are certain information that Satan is waiting to receive so that he can attack and oppose. So the day he heard that, wow, this young man is going to be a great man or woman of God in our generation. Satan said, huh, really? For all the years that Jesus was walking on earth, Satan never bothered him until the day he was baptized. And the Bible said, and the heavens opened. And the voice of the Lord came and said, this is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. Right there, the Bible said the, the Spirit took him into the wilderness. And guess who met him at the wilderness? Satan. He said, Hey, you are the son. And if you are the son, then turn this bread, then turn this stone into bread. If you are the son, throw, he began to question him about what God said. Because all he was waiting for is for that information. As a matter of fact, from the days of Adam, he was waiting for that voice. Because when Adam and Eve sinned, in Genesis chapter 3, the Bible said that the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman, the seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. And so he said, who, who is that seed? So from, from that day, he was looking for the seed. He went to Noah. He did not find the seed. Uh, he went to Abraham. The seed was not there. He went to Isaac, Jacob. He said the seed was not there. He went to Moses. Moses, see, even when Moses was being born, he said, ah, this might be the seed. Let me begin to kill. And so he went and tried to kill the seed, but Moses escaped, even though Moses was not a seed. And then when, when, when Jeremiah and all the prophets came, he tried them. Even he tried Elijah because he thought Elijah was the seed. And then, when Jesus was being born, the wise men went and gave the information out. He said, ah, this is what I'm waiting for. And he went after Jesus. And the Lord caused Jesus to escape. You, you, you get what is happening? Satan wanted to fight the word of the Lord for many years. And so the question is that the moment that, that is revealed about yourself, he will begin to fight you. And contend for your prophetic words. That is what Paul, by revelation, said to Timothy. He said, Timothy, this charge I commit unto you, my son Timothy. According to the prophecies that has gone ahead of you. That thou by the prophecies, thou by them might as war a good warfare. Because if you don't war, you will never see the manifestation. So the more you are saying, prophet... Prophesy, you better be ready for battle. Because the moment the prophet released the word, the enemy in your father's house say, Hey, let me go after her. Ah, let me go after him. The, the powers that are in the neighborhood, they begin to fight you. Why? Because they have heard the news. Satan works by information. That is why sometimes they can plant a best friend who is a witch. And you don't tell your things to anyone but this friend. And it's the same person that is giving information in the realms of the spirit. Hey. 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 Be careful who comes around you. Some of them are agents of darkness. We just dealt with a situation, trust me, here, in school. You go to school and all of a sudden you, you go online or the, to find a friend. Not knowing that this friend has been sent in the realms of the spirit. And all of a sudden, this person became so close to one of our sisters. And while they were in school, the enemy used this sister to really fight. Ah, my goodness. Be careful. Now, she had no clue that this person even, the, the person even come from a different country. So you may think that, oh, this person don't come from my country, so... The witches can never connect. In the realms of the spirit, there's no country. Oh? As much as there is no distance in the spirit. Be careful. 
Now let me go into my message. You must be willing to fight. Say, I must be willing to fight. So in this story of in Deuteronomy, God gave them the prophecy. He said, this, this, he said, behold, I have given you. I have given KFT this land. I have given you this. But the end thing is that you must fight for it. You will not have it if you don't fight. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the spirit of the warrior. In Jesus' name. You must contend for the things you've seen in your dreams. You must hold on to the prophetic word. And say, Lord, you told me this. And you stand on it and you pray. That is why he said, abide the prophetic word. This charge I commit unto you by son, my son Timothy. According to the what? Prophecies. That thou by them. By what? If you're an English student, what does that mean? That means that the prophecies that has gone ahead, hold, use that as a weapon. So your prophetic word is your weapon in prayer to, for, for fulfillment. If you don't know what God has said, you can never fight for it. So knowing what he has said is what you stand on to fight. If you don't know what he has said, your battle will never go anywhere. The question, do you know what God said concerning you? Do you have any prophetic word hanging on your head? May the Lord help us. In the name of Jesus. Now, of all the battles a man faces in life, the most intense battle is the battle from the womb. With all the battles you are going to ever experience, the most powerful one intense, the one that is so stubborn, the one that may not be easy to go is the one that started from the womb. So in Acts chapter 14 verse 8 the Bible said this man was crippled in his mother's womb. He was an impotent from his mother's womb, crippling in his mother's womb. It was a battle that began from the womb. The question is, what crippled the person from the womb? I thought every good and every perfect gift come from the Lord. And if God is the one that is giving us perfect gifts and this good gift, how come I give birth to it and it's already deformed. Something has gone wrong with the, in the womb. This is not from the Lord. Somebody say, this is not from the Lord. Say, this is not from the Lord. You see, when the devil wants to hinder men from fulfilling their purpose, he attacks or corrupt them in the womb. Some of you are sitting here you are dealing with the spirit of rejection and it did not happen in the, when you were born. It happened in the womb. And so you've been doing everything to break out, but you can't break out. It's a womb matter. You must enter the womb to correct it. There are certain things that you are experiencing and it's coming from the womb. Tonight, the Lord said he's ready to deliver. So many of the attacks the devil does when the child is still in the womb. So you will give birth to this child and there are certain demonic spirit attached to the child before you even gave birth to the child. Satan can attack the womb. You see, Satan can go into the womb. Now, if this crippling spirit, if this cripple, crippling is a spirit, that means that a child can be possessed. A child can be oppressed and possessed by demons before they are born. You didn't get it. If crippling spirits, if, if, if cri being crippled is done by a spirit called the spirit of crippling or whatever. Or if somebody is blind, 
The spirit of blindness is already. That means that in the womb, a child can be visited by demons. <laughs> you get it? So if I'm born and there's a homosexual spirit on me, that means that in the womb, a demon of homosexuality took be connected with me. Now recently, remember the child, the guy in Texas that, that went and killed his grandmother? And then went and killed all the children. Now, that child is a demon. Yeah, you gave birth to them. But there's a demonic spirit that was in the child when you gave birth to. The womb. The womb. Now, you just dealt with birth. Eh? And I want you to mind it that when you are pregnant, be very careful. Because any door you open, that child that you are giving birth to can be attacked. The womb. Say the womb. Say the womb. Hmm. May no demonic power attach themselves to your child. Hmm. This is why when you are pregnant, be very spiritual. You, you cannot be lazy when you are pregnant. Some of us, our parents were very ignorant when they were pregnant. And so we were born with all kinds of issues. Issues that are coming from where? The womb. Today may you be delivered. You said, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Yeah, the womb situations are hard, but there's nothing too hard for the Lord to deal with. Oh, may the Lord do a creative miracle with you. A creative miracle. I say a creative miracle. In the name of Jesus. There are certain situations that Jesus met that he had to create. He said the man was blinded from, the, from his womb, from the womb of his mother. And Jesus had to put a clay, mix, mix, mix uh, spit or saliva with clay. Remember, he made us with what? The dust. So Jesus said, this one... I can't just change, I can't just fix it because it's not there. Because it happened in the womb. I must now create it. So he placed it here. And he created the eye. Because the issue was a womb issue. Some of you are dealing with issues that cannot be changed here physically. It will only take the hand of the Lord and the creative miracle for the thing to turn around. And today, may that creative miracle be released unto you. May the Lord do that creative thing with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes you give birth to a child. And the child is epilepsy. Epilepsy. Epileptic. How did that happen? Eh? And the doctor said, oh, it happened when in the womb. They, they can even tell you if he will be epileptic when you, the child is in the womb. It's a womb issue. But today, under the sound of my voice, anyone here that you've given birth to a child who is deformed, today, may the hand of the Lord turn things around. I say, may the hand of the Lord turn things around. May the hand of the Lord change the situation in the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord turn situations around in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Now, the Bible said that the man was lame from his mother's womb. And because he was lame, when others were walking, he was being carried. Hmm. So everybody walk, and for him, we have to carry him. And if you are being carried, you can only go as far as the, str the strength of the people that are carrying you. So your life, although you are called to do more, you can only do what the person that is carrying you can do. And I pray for you that you will not be carried. 
You will not be carried by men. Anything that has crippled your destiny, anything that has crippled your future, anything that has crippled your life, anything that has crippled you physically, may the hand of the Lord begin to turn it around. May the hand of the Lord remove it from the way. In the name of Jesus, may God do a creative miracle in your life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. So this man's life was restricted to a life of failure because he was born lame. Some of you, it's not like you are not smart enough. It wasn't like you, God did not create you with greatness in his mind. It is because something happened in the womb of your mother that has given you the disadvantage. And today my prayer is that Lord will bring everything into divine alignment. My prayer is that whatever took place in the womb of your mother will be overturned. By the mercies of God, may it be overturned. Somebody say over 10, over 10, over 10. In the name of Jesus, may your life not be a life of failure. May you not be restricted. May you not be carried by the strength of men. But may the Lord help you to walk when others are walking. Can you imagine being born the same day, the same hospital? The same year, and your friends are walking, and you cannot walk. They are going to school, and you cannot go. They are getting married, and you cannot get married. They are having children, and you are still not able to have children. This is what crippling is. Some of you, it may not be physically being crippled, but in the realms of the spirit, your destiny is crippled. There's nothing that moves the people that you started with, they are ahead of you. The people that you went to school with, graduated with, they are the ones that are hiring people. And you are still looking for a job. There are people that you started with. I've now married with children and are doing well. And you are still in the same place. Crippling destiny. As a result of what happened in the womb. May the Lord deliver you. I can imagine how depressing, how painful it is for you to see all your friends doing well. And you look at your life and say, Lord, why me? How long? How come? Some of you, your issue is not even demonic now. Like demonic, like a, de a witch bewitching you. It's as a, as a result of what happened in the womb of your mother. I will explain what the womb is. It's just an introduction. May Jehovah help us. May the Lord help us. If you understand the principle of the womb and understand how the womb works, you can never be proud. Why? Because it may not, the reason why you may be better or you may feel like you are doing better than somebody else. Maybe as a result of the womb that you both come, came out of. Some of you have advantage by per the womb you came out of. And some of you have disadvantage per the womb that you came out of. Don't we always say that, oh, if you would have been born in this side of the world, things would have been changed. If you were a different color, things would be changed. It's as a result of the womb you came out of. So there are certain experiences that we experience as a result of where we were born and who gave birth to us. Some of you, your fathers and your mothers were witches and wizards. Some of you, your fathers were occultics. They, were, they, were, they went to the obiam and they did all kinds of things. You were born in a situation where you had to struggle. You had to struggle. Say, Lord, deliver me. So the strongest battles are battles that started from the womb. Anything that attack you on your way in life can be easily handled. 
But when it happened in the womb, imagine being born without a leg. Now, for me to pray for you to create a, a, a leg, it's not an easy thing. But at least if you have a leg and it broke, we can pray that the Lord will heal it and break. You see, so, so things that happen in the womb are not easy miracles. Now, to turn somebody who from the womb think that they, although they are men, males, but in their mind, from the womb, they think that they are females, to turn them, it's not an easy thing. So one of the defenses for most homosexuals, I was born that way. Because you're dealing with the womb. The ones that pick it up on their way, those we can cast the demon out and they'll be free. But the Lord's hand is not too short. That he cannot save Tonight, things will turn around. Oh, do you believe that God is able to turn things around? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hmm. Now, when you get into an accident, and you break your leg, like I said, we can fix it. Sometimes even the doctor can fix that one. But if there's no leg, how do we even fix that? Say, Lord, help me. Now, when you look in Mark chapter 3, Mark chapter 4, verse 3 to 27, I'm not going to read it all. But you have to understand that the kind of womb through which you were born on this earth realm it's either an advantage or disadvantage. In Mark chapter 3, verse 3, Mark chapter 4, verse 3 to 27, he talked about, put the first one on the screen. He said, He said, Hearken, behold, there went out a sower to sow. And it came to pass that as he sowed, some fell on the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on a stony ground where it had not much earth and immediately it sprang up because it had no death on earth. <laughs> but when the sun was up, it was scorched and because it had no root, it withered away. And some fell among thorns and the thorns grew up and choked it and it yielded no fruit. Another fell on what? A good ground. And did yield fruit that sprang up and increased and brought forth some 30 and some 60 and some 100. He's talking about a sower who went to sow seeds. Now, I know the biologists here, a sperm, what, what is a sperm? A sperm is a seed. You understand that? That means that as males, the seed we carry the sperm can be sown. So you can imagine, you can use the power of your imagination that these, these are sperms that are being released, good sperms. But the first one fell on the wayside and it was gone. The second one on the stony ground, gone. The one in the thorns and thistles, gone. It took the one that fell on where? The good ground. That means that your seed can be as good as possible the best seed, the best genes, if it does not fall on a good womb, it will never be fruitful. Which means that the foundation of every man is in the womb. <laughs> Your seed can be as good as you want. But if it does not find the right womb, you are in trouble. This is why, as a man, when you are looking for a wife, be careful for the womb which you want to plant your seed because it will affect the children. It will affect the fruit that will come out. Hmm. 
Say, Lord, help me. That's why back in the day, for you as a man to go and marry in our culture, your parents will send spies to go into the woman's family to investigate whether there is a sickler in the house, whether there is a thief in the house. They will make sure and investigate the house before they follow you to go and marry in the house. Nowadays, everybody just get up. And it's go, we go. Because they understood that if you get, we have children in this house, what is in the house can affect the child? The womb. So women, and last, last two weeks, I believe that the program, the Think Pink program, introduced this, to, to, this thing to you. That your responsibility is so large that it will be a waste of time to be, to be tried to be like men. Because what you carry is so important that if you miss it, the whole earth is in trouble. But we are so busy trying to be like men. That what a waste of time. As much as your responsibility, I believe, is bigger than even men. Because the entry point to this planet, every good or bad thing that happened here is through the womb of a woman. If it does not go through the womb of a woman, it does not come. The door to this earth is the woman's womb. So a great man, a great woman, all of them, where they come from? From somebody's womb. <laughs> Jesus Christ, where did he come from? Satan is the only one that ever came from somebody's womb. So the reason why he hates women is because you remind him that he's illegal here on this earth. Anytime he sees that, ah, look at them again. They, they think that now they make me feel like I'm not, I don't belong here. Because you are the door. A woman is the doorway to this earth. Without a woman, there is no entry. Hitler came through somebody's womb. Mama Teresa came through somebody's womb. The good and the bad come through the womb. Somebody gave birth to them. Don't worry. Jesus is here. He will turn your situation around. He did it so many times in the scriptures. There are many people that he met that they had a womb issue. And he fixed it. The same Christ is here tonight. And he's going to fix the issue that happened in your womb. In the womb of your mother. The problem that you went through. Jesus is here to fix it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So like I said. The kind of soil, in other words, the kind of womb that you are born from will determine your destiny. May your womb be blessed. May the womb of your wife be blessed. May every child that comes from your womb be blessed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say, oh Lord, bless my womb. Bless the womb of my wife. In the mighty name of Jesus, say, bless my womb. You better declare it. Better declare it. Don't cry. Jesus is already fixing the situation. Like I said, when you see that somebody is struggling and you are doing well, it may not be because you are smart. It may be because the battle, the womb they came from is different from the one that you came from. And that is the difference. When you look at uh, Psalm 11 verse 3, Psalm 11 verse 3, he said, if the foundation be destroyed, <laughs> what can the righteous do? <laughs> if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? do. So therefore, what is the foundation of man? You can write this down. The foundation of every man or every woman is the womb. Somebody said the womb. Hmm. 
Now you see how important the womb is. That it is the foundation of every man. And so when you look at Psalm 139, verse 13, you will know that the womb is where things begin. He said, for thou hast possessed my rings, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. You've covered me in where? My mother's womb. You've covered me in my foundation. This is where it all began. And you've already covered me. May the Lord cover you. May every child that you give birth to be covered in the womb. May the protection of the Lord be released in the womb. In the name of Jesus. So the womb is the foundation of man. So the devil wants to, if the devil wants to destroy you, he entered the foundation. Because the Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So if I can attack you in your foundation, then you are done. So many people have been attacked in their foundation. On the day the mother, their mother conceived them, there are things that the enemy were doing. And because of that, it's that they have nothing to stand upon. To be blind from your mother's womb. To be crippled from your mother's womb. To be homosexual from your mother's womb. It will only take the creative hand of the Lord to overturn it. And today, if you are here, dealing with the issues from your mother's womb, I pray for the creative hand of the Lord to begin to create things and overturn it for you in the name of Jesus. If something happened in the womb, today, may the Lord take you back to the womb and fix it. In Jesus' name. Say, oh Lord, fix my situation. Take me back to the womb. Take me back to the foundation. And fix my foundation. In the name of Jesus Christ. The womb. Satan knows this. So when he wants to manipulate the destinies of men. He will corrupt the womb. There are many women that have encounters, demonic encounters when they are pregnant. That is, I'm here to encourage you. If you're a woman here and you are pregnant, be very spiritual. In the time of your pregnancy is when you have to be highly spiritual because the enemy will come for the child. I remember when we were pregnant with our first child and my wife said she had a vision. She was there and she felt like a hand, just a hand, trying to touch the baby. And the child went like this. And when the child went out, it became a sword that decapitated that hand. You, you understand? So from today, any hand that will try to touch your baby in the womb, may their hands be decapitated. May their hands be cut off. In the name of Jesus, your child will not be attacked. give birth to a child and the doctor said the child is not talking. What happened? Every good and every perfect gift come from the Lord. This is not good and perfect. That means that an enemy has done this. A sower sowed a seed. But the Bible said while men slept, when we went to sleep, his enemies came and sowed another bad seed. When they woke up and said, who has done this? They went to the master. He said, an enemy has done this. The evil you see, the evil that we see through our children is the work of the enemy. That is why when you are ignorant of what the enemy is doing, he will gain advantage. So when I'm pregnant, I must be what? Highly spiritual and sensitive. At that time, the child is being formed. He said, in your mother's womb, I formed you. That means that it is the foundation. It's the beginning of all things. When the, when the seed meet the egg, it begins to form. In where? The womb. The womb. It is where life begins. So even when they say that, oh, you can abort the child or, 
or, or, or when, when you, no, no, no. It, the womb is when everything begins. It's the foundation. Somebody say the foundation. Say the foundation. Say the foundation. Now, if the womb is the foundation, imagine if your mother is a witch. That means that her womb is basically a temple of witchcraft. A sanctuary of witchcraft. Can you imagine being born by a witch mother? Hey. Some of us, we are in a dis- disadvantage already. You are already in disadvantage. So therefore, when you are born, you will be under the spirit of witchcraft. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14, what does it say? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 14. He said, for the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband, else were your children unclean. That means that if you were born with an unclean parent, you are unclean. If you are born and one of your parents is sanctified, then you are sanctified. So that means that your state as a mother affects your child. If you are witch, your child will be affected. If you are a thief, your child will be affected. An unbelieving husband. Even your sanctification affects your spouse. That means that we, could that be that some of us have given birth to unclean children? What was your, Christi- how was your Christianity when you gave birth to that child? Now you understand why the child is behaving the way they are behaving. Because they were unclean. They were unclean. Because you yourself was unclean. There are situations that are womb situations. I said it on, on, on a thing thing. I said when you, are, when you are pregnant, do the right thing because everything you're doing is affecting the child. Do the right thing. The condition and the state of the mother can determine the quality of the life of the child. Let me repeat that. The condition and the state of the mother in this way, forget the father. When it comes to birthing, fathers, we are on the side waiting for the delivery day. We don't know what is happening. You have no clue what is happening. That is when, when it came for Jesus to be born, men were not included in that equation. He said, this has nothing to do with you. And the reason why Mary had to be virgin, because what she must give birth to is clean. You can, listen, you cannot, you see, you see, the reason why some people become barren is because sometimes God has ordained for you to give birth to a prophet. So he will shut your womb until you come, you become clean and then he will release the child. And some of you will take 10 years for you to become clean and you will stay barren because he will not allow you to, to give birth to anything until you are clean because you carry the mandate to give birth to a prophet. So you know that any time in the Bible that somebody was barren, when they gave birth, the, the child became a prophet. And that's what happened to Hannah. Hannah was, you see, God used the barrenness to prepare Hannah until the day that Hannah changed and became righteous is the day that the child was released. For all the years, Hannah was going and there was no child coming until the day that she was changed. And then she went before the Lord and said, Lord, for this time, I know you need a prophet. I need a child. Let's negotiate. And God saw the heart of Hannah and said, wow, she has changed. Now I can release a child through her. Thank you, Jesus. He said, a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord until the 10th generation. So some of you will take 10 years for things to change. That means that God is waiting for 10 generations to come for things to, uh, to be aligned again. You know, what I just said, I hope you understand me. 
that the bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord until the tenth generation. Do you understand that? This is what happened. Why the tribe of Judah was not able to produce a king, although they had the prophetic mandate to produce a king, because Judah committed incest with his daughter-in-law, ended up sleeping with Tamar, daughter-in-law, gave birth to two children, the twins, and from there they committed incest. And the, and the Lord has already declared that when you committed incest, those children will not enter into God's congregation. That means that they will not be accepted by the Lord until the 10th generation. So if there's a prophetic mandate upon them, it will wait until the 10th generation to manifest. So Judah was, you no, know, David come from the tribe of Judah, you understand that? So Judah could not produce a king that God had to jump to Benjamin to give us Saul, who came out of what? The Benjamin. Benjamins were not supposed to be kings. But because Judah committed a, a sin, they couldn't come out and arise to be kings. They almost lost their place because of that sin. Until the 10th generation is when David. So from Judah all the way to David is 10 generations. Somebody say 10 generations. When you go, I will one day count the generations. I don't have time for that. But 10 generations. So some of you, God will delay some things until you have changed. You were a mother of a prophet, but you were doing Jakusko in high school. You were sleeping in your boyfriend's house in college. You were doing Netflix and chill, whatever it is. And now you want to give birth to a prophet. The Lord said, wait. We need to change some things. We need to renew the womb. We need to get to a point where if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And some of you, it takes 10 years, 7 years, 5 years for all things to become new. And so there are some barrenness situation that is orchestrated by God himself. Say, Lord, help me. We need to pray. There are four types of womb. There's a fruitful womb. There's a barren womb. There is a miscarrying womb. And there's a graveyard womb. <laughs> Somebody say, wait. Now, a fruitful womb, you already know. May your womb be fruitful. I say, may your womb be fruitful. And then we have a barren womb. A barren womb is a womb that cannot receive seed. And the spiritual door of the womb has been shut. You see, when it comes to giving birth, it's not only physical. There's a door in the spirit that opens that allows the child to be released from the realms of the spirit. When somebody is barren, that spiritual door is closed. So physically, they will do all kinds of things. They will have sex as 10 times a day. Every time her, she feels like her egg has been released, they will have sex and it will never happen because spiritual door for the child to come has been shut. So barrenness is a spiritual issue. It's a spiritual issue. And sometimes that's why even when you try other ways, it does not work. Because it's highly spiritual. The doorway has been shut. Amen. And then we have a miscarrying womb. In Hosea chapter 9 verse 14, it says, give them a miscarrying womb. 
That means you, the enemy can cast on you a miscarrying womb. That one you can receive the seed, but you can never sustain a seed. You can never keep it for the nine months. But I stand upon the word of the Lord. And I declare over every woman under the sound of my voice that you will not miscarry. I speak against every miscarrying womb. I curse every miscarrying womb. Your womb will never miscarry. In the name of Jesus. I say your womb will never miscarry. Say I will not miscarry. Say I will not miscarry. Say I cancel every miscarrying womb. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Say I will keep a child for nine months. And deliver in style. In the name of Jesus. Say I, can I cancel every miscarrying womb. You will not miscarry in the name of Jesus. And in Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 17, very interesting thing here. He said, because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave. Let me read it again. Because he slew me not from the womb, or that my mother might have been my grave. My mother have been my grave. And a womb to always great, great, great with me. Give me the NIV for this one. He said, for he did not kill me in, my, in the womb. With my mother as my grave. Yes, better. That means that you can die in your mother's womb. Yeah, miscarry, you come out. But there are many people that are born physically, but their destinies die in the mother's womb. That's what I'm talking about. That gives you disadvantage that if you come from a graveyard womb, your destiny dies before you are born. There are many people that who they were born by is the reason why they struggle. Because that womb has been cursed. To kill destinies before it is born. Can you imagine being born <laughs> and by the time you hit the earth, your stars has already been swallowed up. You are, you are there physically but it's struggle upon struggle. You are alive physically but dead spiritually. I pray for you. If you are here and you came from such a womb, may the Lord restore some things. Everything that died in your mother's womb, may the Lord re re revive it. May there be a resurrection of your destiny in the name of Jesus. Destiny, resurrect. Destiny, resurrect. Destiny, resurrect in the name of Jesus Christ. Sometimes some of you have a dream that they bury something of yours in the graveyard. It's a sign of the destiny that has been captured in the graveyard. But the Lord knows where it is. And today, may the angel of the Lord go into that graveyard and take and dig up and bring forth whatever they, they, they store there, whatever they bury there. May the Lord revive it in the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, revive my destiny. Whoa. What is the womb? Like I said the womb is the legal entry point to this earth. Whether good or bad, it's through the womb of a woman. And one of the things that I want you to be very careful is that as a woman, you must protect yourself from spiritual marriages. The reason why, yes, for man, when a spiritual marriage thing happens, it's bad. But when it happens for a woman, it's ten times worse. Why am I saying that? Because you carry a womb that stores things. You could be attacked at the age of 16 by a spiritual husband. Who will sleep you have a dream that a demon came in your dream and slept with you. What they do is they deposit evil within you. And it can be there for many years until the day you get married. And you get married and your husband sleep with you and you get pregnant. That thing that they stored up can enter the child. You see, the enemy, why do you think that he sleeps with people? 
It's a strategy because he know that the foundation is in the womb. So if I can store things up there, I can take over the children. Why? What will make this guy kill his grandmother and went to a school? He went to a school and killed little children. First graders, second graders. How? He has to be a demon that was in that child. Do you remember in the days of Noah? When these fallen angels came on earth, they saw how beautiful the woman, not the man. You see, woman, your responsibility is so much. What you allow is what get birth here on this earth. I'm telling you. So it is a waste of time to be like a man because what you carry is so heavy. All the good men, the great men, the prophets, the businessmen, the millionaires, they all came through the womb. Without a woman's womb, they cannot enter here. The good, the bad that you see here is as a result of the womb. So what you allow to enter the womb is very dangerous. Now, what happened in the days of Noah? I like it. Whoever is doing the scripture, you are in the spirit. He said that the sons of God, which were the fallen angels, they saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, which means that they were beautiful. And they took them wives of all which they chose. So they came and forcefully chose some women and said, we love them. And slept with them. And guess what they gave birth to? Giants. God never created any giant with living toes. It was not part of God's creation. It was as a result of a demon and a woman who gave birth to those giants. And those giants introduced a level of wickedness in our world that the, we have never seen before. And the Bible said that even a repented God that he has created man because of those evil creations. And, the, and the, the moment they were born by a woman, they became legal to stay here. You see, that's the problem what comes through you become liquor here on earth. They gave birth to demons. They gave birth to evil people. That means that as a woman, you can give birth to Satan. I'm telling you. There are some children that you gave birth to that you know they are evil. <laughs> you be on your feet. Because I'm not even done with this. There are some things that has been, <laughs> for a child to pick up a gun and go to school and shoot, you, you know you gave birth to a devil. I'm not hurting your feelings, but that child is a devil. You've given birth to a devil. To kill your own grandmother. If the mother was there, he would have killed her. Is it normal? Bible Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in our days. That means that what happened in the days of Noah is still happening. That the enemy is depositing evil in men, women, especially women. So you must fight off every demonic deposit that is waiting in the due time to affect your child. You gave birth to a child. You look into your family line. There is no history of any epileptic. There is no history of any crippling. There is no history of anything that is, you know, some bad thing. But you give birth to a child and number one, the doctors say they, they are epileptic. They, are, they, they have no heart. Their mind, something is wrong. They will be delayed in life. Or whatever, and they keep diagnosing it. It's not coming from anywhere but what has been deposited in the womb. The issue is the womb. So today we must enter the womb. There are things that have been deposited. Today it must come out. If you have been visited by spirits every night we go to sleep, you better pray. I always say that the best, the best preparation for marriage is deliverance. You enter marriage with all those spiritual husbands, you are done. 
They will fight the marriage and fight the children, deposit some evil things in the child. Hmm. The womb is so sensitive that what you do physically affects the child when you are pregnant with them. What you even hear, what you say, what you think affects your child. But we will deal with that next week. Tonight, if you want to pray, my time is fast spent. I just wanted to introduce that this womb thing that we're talking about is very serious and most of our issues are coming from the womb. The reason why, with all your goodness, you, people always pay you back. <laughs> when you do good for people, they always, they will always turn some way. It's not coming from anywhere. It's a womb issue. It's a battle that is coming from the womb. Every man disappoints you. So you carry disappointment wherever you go. Afflictions upon so afflictions. Tonight we are on a prayer. On common hardship and sorrow. Chappes was an honorable man, but he was in sorrow and pain and hardship. Why? Because the mother, the mother, the Bible never said the father. He said the mother. So you carry a precious thing inside of you. Anytime the umbilical cord connects you to the child. It connects you to the child. So whatever you feed on, you feed goes into the child. So in the realms of the spirit, there's a silver cord that connects the spirit of the child to the body of the child that is inside of you. The moment that silver cord is cut, the child will die physically. I just want us to pray. I want to deal with the demonic deposits that the enemy has strategically deposited in our womb, waiting for the child to be released in there so that they can affect the child. And on that, I declare that no one will have a child that is deformed from today. Yeah, it happened in the days of your past. But from today, none of your children will be deformed. None of your children will be attacked. The child in your womb will be preserved. In the mighty name of Jesus, the seed will fall into a good ground. May the Lord make your womb a good ground. And may the seed that we release fall on a good ground. In the name of Jesus. And tonight we will pray against anything that happened to us when we were in the womb of our mothers. In the name of Jesus and reverse some things. In the demonic, demonic desires, demonic desires. Some of you desire a woman, you are desiring women. It's not normal. If you're a man, you are desiring men. It's not normal. It may be something that happened in the womb. That must be reversed. In the name of Jesus. Maybe when your mother heard that you were a boy, she was disappointed. And that information went into the child. And said that my mom wants me to be a, boy, a girl, although I'm a boy. And so you came out with that information. Tonight, I want us to pray against number one thing is deposits of evil. Deposits of evil. I see deliverance happening in this place. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Say, my father, my father. Tonight, Tonight, I come before you, I come before you as, a servant, as a servant, as your child, as your child asking, asking for help. For help. Tonight, Tonight, oh Lord, oh Lord let, let any deposit let any that the enemy, the enemy has deposited deposit in, in me, waiting, 
for the appointed time to attack my child. Oh Lord, tonight deliver me from it in the name of Jesus. Anything that happened between me and the spirit spouse, oh Lord, let the blood of Jesus neutralize neutralize, neutralize. Nullify. nullify in the name of Jesus, name of Jesus. say I nullify, I nullify. every demonic deposit every, every demonic within, me. within me inside of me, inside of me. In, the in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus say oh Lord, oh Lord. in this spiritual marriage let it break let it break let it break let it break say I break every spiritual marriage say I break every spiritual marriage I break, I break every spiritual marriage. Every spiritual I break, marriage. I break every spiritual marriage. Every spiritual marriage. Yes. Now, as a man, when you start sleeping with people in the dream, they can also deposit something in you that when you meet a woman, your wife, you can deposit, you can release it to. Because the target is the child in the womb. So whether it comes in the woman already or it's going to be released as a poison, can't do la masata. That is why when, you, when your wife is pregnant and you are having those encounters, be careful not to sleep with her. Because if they don't get the wife, they come for you. And the moment you, you saw yourself sleeping with somebody in a dream, you can easily transfer whatever they want to deposit to the child, to your wife. Now you understand why the enemy used that strategy. And tonight, every demonic deposit whether through the man or the woman, yes, Lord. let the blood of Jesus yes, nullify it. Yes, Lord. Nullify it. Nullify it. Nullify it. Nullify it. In the name of Jesus. Say, oh Lord, oh, Lord. as I begin to clap my hands and pray, and pray, let the blood of Jesus nullify every demonic deposit within me right now. In my womb. In my womb. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Somebody pray. Pray, clap your hands and pray. Clap your hands and pray. Matalaba, sikal talaba. 